I'm looking at the fault code P0102. At this point, I want to go ahead and tap on Hotline Archives. So I originally got my fault code. Now I'm going to get my repair information. We're going to get as much repair information as we can to help us diagnose this problem. And I have not yet left the fender of this car. I'm going to tap on Hotline Archives. Up will come a whole group of available stuff to, that's available for us to physically look at. Right now, you'll notice that I've got two right there on the front page that are available showing us that we've got an actual um, symbol that indicates a bullseye, an actual known fix, a confirmed fix for this particular code. I just want to scroll through the page so you can see how many available are there for you. I would physically go ahead and read for the one I want, but I'm going to come back up and I look at it and you'll see the number third one down says um, it was a 98 Olds Intrigue, but this is what they found for that same fault code P0102. They had a problem with a wiring connection at the mass airflow sensor. So I'm going to go ahead and tap on that. That's got the bullseye, which is a confirmed fix. When I tap on that, up will come from the internet, direct to our tool, at the fender, an actual repair that we can perform. This is an OE repair strategy. So now I'm going to zoom in a little bit and we can look at what we have. It'll give me that it's a 98 volts at Treak, 16,600 miles, and it'll give me the test procedure, test in the procedure itself. Let's talk about the possible causes first before I go too far. It gives me a few things, wiring and connections. Let's go back and actually read what it was there for test and procedure. Check the wiring le uh, to the mass airflow sensor for possible loose connections or places where wiring could intermittently rub through to ground. Check for broken wires inside the installation near the mass airflow. And three, be sure the ignition switch is powering up with each circuit properly. So now that we know that, we now have our procedure what to look for. If I want to know who actually came up with this actual um, repair, I could then tap on Tech Bio, and there it is. We know it was done by Lester Bentley. Lester, if you're out there, hello. So at this point, let's go back and see what else I can do. First of all, I saw what I could do for the actual fault code, but there's some other things I could do with this as well. I can go to what's called a supercharged format, where I can physically just type in the letters MAF for mass airflow and see what it's got. That may not be for a fault code, I could use that for a drivability issue. So let's look at what we can do there, and we'll see that we got a whole host of repair information available. So I'm just going to go to keyword, and I could do keyword here from my fault code page, I could do that from my diagnostic information page, wherever I need to. If I tap in the letters MAF for mass airflow, what's going to happen next is I tap the enter button. It's going to go out and search for all the available repair information based on a mass airflow sensor. So let's select what type of vehicle we want to deal with. We're going to go with the same selection, models with the same engine, plus or minus two years. That'll give me a large broad band of all the available repair information that's there. So now if you look at it, I got the same hotline archives available. Only this time I've got a larger number to select from. I got technical service bulletins. I just want to quickly show you that before I go a little bit further. But if I tap on TSBs, I'm just going to tap on any TSB that's available, but these are related to mass airflow, and see what it shows. When I tap on TSB, up comes an actual technical service bulletin. And if you look at it closely, that's an actual General Motors technical service bulletin. Buick for General Motors. I'm looking at OEM technical service bulletin. So I'm going to tap my back key, and we're now in another subset. We're looking at technical service bulletins, but let's see what's also available on the tabs over on the left side. I'm going to scroll down, and we're going to go see what else is out there. We've got component location. I want to know where my mass airflow sensor is. I'll tap on component location, tap on engine, and tap on mass airflow, and there is my actual engine and it shows us where the mass airflow sensor is. So I can physically go ahead and zoom in on it and then drag it wherever I want to. And if I look at it, I'm going to bring it back out, you'll see that the mass airflow sensor is item number six. So item number six is over to the right. I'll go ahead and zoom in a little bit. We we're going to bring it a little bit closer. We'll zoom in a little more. And there we can find our mass airflow sensor. We're going to go ahead and see what other repair information is available too. I'm going to hit the back key once more. I'm going to use my down arrow to scroll to see what's available for me. And we'll notice that we got specs available. One of the nice things about this is that I can go ahead and I know what my actual repair is and what my test is to do. Now I want to go ahead and see what my spec is so that later on when I physically go and look at data stream and all that good stuff, I know what it should read. I'll tap on specs. 
I'll tap on airflow sensor. Now comes a complete spec chart. I can zoom in on that too because it's a little hard for me to see on the smaller screen. If I tap on the zoom button, I can see what my mass airflow sensor should read in frequency. All right, so I'm going to zoom in once again. There it is at idle, 1.2. And I can see what my voltage is supposed to be. I'm supposed to have a power supply voltage around um, 9.6 to 14.5. 9.6 on the low and 14.5 on the high. This is actual General Motors specifications, by the way. These are not some generic ones. These are actual General Motors. So now we're going to go ahead and press the back key, and we're going to go ahead and do some other things. Now that I have that, I'm going to go ahead and test my mass airflow sensor. So I went and got my fault code. I went and got my repair information. We're going down in a guided path, a linear description of all the things that we can do to make our repair. Fault code, repair information. Now I've got my spec of what my mass airflow sensor should be so I can check it at data stream. But now I want to go look at a wiring diagram so I can also look at it with a lab scope. So I'm going to scroll down. I'll tap on my wiring diagram. I'm then going to tap on the engine. I'm going to scroll until I find the wiring diagram that has the mass airflow sensor. And number nine shows that mass airflow sensor is there. Up will come an OE wiring diagram, a little large. I can't see it that well. So this time I want to bring it back out a little bit. I'm going to bring it back out. And then I'm going to scroll around until I find the mass airflow sensor. I want to see what my mass airflow sensor signal wire is so I know what to hook my lab scope to. To do that, if I look at the mass airflow sensor, I see I've got a three wire. The yellow wire is my signal, mass airflow sensor signal wire. If I look at it where it goes to the control module, we'll verify that it's yellow and it's pin 69 and it's pin, it's pin 69 at the control module and pin A at the mass airflow sensor. So now that I know all that, let's go ahead and look at what else I can do. I've got my fault code. I've got my repair information. What I got for repair information was what is known as a hotline archive. The hotline archive told me what to check for. Told me to look at some of the things that were there, but I forgot already, so let's back up just to remind ourselves. I don't have to go back any further. I'm now going to hit our Hotline Archive again. I'll go ahead and find the one I was dealing with. And there it is, right there for me to look at once more. Now that I've done that, I'm going to go back to the menu. I'm going to go to Data Stream, and I'm going to start my car. Now that the car is running, we're going to go ahead and look at my mass airflow sensor signal and see what I'm reading. So I'll go to um, um, engine data one. We're going to let it load up. Where are wireless to the vehicle at this point in time? And again, once again, I'm driving this just as it told us in the hotline archive. We went and got our fault code. I went direct. And by the way, I got that fault code wireless. I went then at that point in time to the internet called Direct Hit and got my repair information, Hotline Archive. It gave me a few suggestions of what to do. And then I went and physically got a specification of what my mass airflow sensor should be in data stream at idle, 1.2 um, uh, hertz. After I did that, I went and found out where my mass airflow sensor is located. It's located right here like it showed me on the picture. And then it, I went to the wiring diagram so I could find out which wire to hook up to to physically go ahead and test the mass, air, mass airflow. So now I'm going to speed scroll down until I find my mass airflow sensor. And there's my mass airflow sensor. I'm going to select it. I'm going to then line graph it. And physically what I'd like to do is show that mass airflow sensor by itself. So to do that, I'm going to press, now that I've selected it, you notice it's selected, a little check mark next to it. At this point in time, I want to look at that on its own. To do that, I'll go ahead and tap on the left tab called Show Select. That will allow me to physically look at the mass airflow sensor only, increasing to my actual data stream refresh rate. Now I'm at my highest possible speed. But you know what? I forgot what my mass airflow sensor spec should be. And before, if I remember right, I was looking at frequency. I could go pull that back out of data stream, but I'm already here. I'm looking at grams per second. I selected the wrong one, so let's see what it shows me that that spec should be. I'm going to tap on Show DI Info, and it'll give me a description of the mass airflow sensor and all the information I need, plus my operating range at grams per second. Not in frequency this time. Later on, we'll go look at mass airflow sensor, and you'll see where frequency is there as well. I'm supposed to be at 3 to 6 grams per second. I'm at 1.33. So I'm going to hide DI info. I'm going to play with my throttle, see if there's a change. 